All right, all right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Autodesk Virtual Academy, brought to you all by Kativ Technologies, your favorite Autodesk and ANSYS partner. Um, I'm Nigel Mbayek, your host for today and every day. And today I'm joined by um, Jose, who's got a two-part last name now. Jose, yeah. how's it going? Doing all right, doing all right. A little rainy, but uh, I'm going to get this going. Yeah, not too bad. I think everyone in California will freak out when it drizzles, and that might be us today. So again, everybody, thanks for joining us today. Um, if today is your first AVA, I know I see a couple of new names in here. Um, definitely welcome to our community. Today we're gonna to be going over implementing Vault Basic. And um, for those of you who don't know what that is, Vault is an application that gets installed when you install things like the product design suite or the collection. Um, and Vault is used as a data management tool for your CAD applications. Um, and the way that Vault's a little bit different than other you know, data management tools is the fact that it is built for CAD um, specifically, right? And so it's got, uh, it's CAD aware. It understands that there are links between the CAD files as opposed to things like your Windows Explorer, which just, it's just files and they exist and you can move them and do whatever you want exactly. with them. Yeah. Um, and so Vault's a little bit more involved than that. But there is this stigma that Vault is absolutely a terror to implement, install, and get going. Um, we kind of want to demystify that. And uh, that's why I brought on Jose, who works in Vault pretty much every day of the year, yep. um, even on weekends. So, um, Jose, do you have anything else to add before we get started here? No, uh, I think you covered it all pretty well there. Uh, yeah, we wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, we're empowering you guys. Uh, we noticed that a lot of our customers have the product design uh, collection uh, and don't have Vault implemented, you know, even though you have access to that tool. Uh, so hopefully, you know, our goal today is just to demystify that, like you mentioned, and get you guys to either think about implementing it on your own using this ABA. Uh, I actually have a blog post that's coming out uh, that, that uh, piggybacks off of this ABA as well. Uh, if you guys can get it done with those uh, tools, perfect. If not, then, uh, and you see interest in the tool, reach out to us and, and then we can, we can help you get that going. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that, you know, just about every customer who's using Inventor, um, or AutoCAD even needs some kind of formal data management tool. And whether that's Vault or something else, um, we think it's super important to have that because the last thing you wanna lose is your data. Um, we've okay. seen it happen before, it is not pretty. Um, don't wanna scare anybody, but it, things happen. Things, so, yeah. And, yeah, and, let's and, go. Uh, yeah, I was let's gonna go say, ahead. we've seen that, we've seen that happen before. Uh, so again, uh, we're gonna jump in here. And then uh, again, today we're gonna be talking about Vault Basic. Uh, this is the version of Vault that comes with the product design suite or collection, depending on which one you have. Uh, they both come with Vault Basic. There are uh, two other forms of Vault, which are Vault Workgroup and Vault Professional. Uh, they come with additional functionality, but they also uh, come at an additional price separate from the collection. Um, again, we're, doing, we're starting off with Vault Basic just because, uh, again, our customers have it available to them, uh, and we want to make sure that we empower them to and know the steps and know the process of implementing this uh, successfully on, on their end. Um, so uh, when we're talking about implementation here, um, I broke it down into, into six steps, uh, six pretty much phases that you guys wanna go through and make sure that, that you are aware of, um, you know, from system requirements, it, uh, setting up the machine initially, uh, installing the ADMS, uh, setting up users and groups, uh, an inventor IPJ, uh, I know some of you are thinking, you know, we don't use inventor. Um, we, we may, we're mostly an AutoCAD house. Um, so I, uh, this step still will pertain to you. Uh, we'll go over why that'll be. And then the last step, adoption, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the actual adoption of the tool. Um, so system requirements and server setup. Again, we're, we're talking about Vault Basic here. So depending on the year, that you're looking to implement. Um, the, the system requirements for that uh, year will be different. Uh, we're talking um, with Vault specifically, you wanna make sure that the version of Vault that you're using is the newest uh, version of the tool uh, compared to your uh, CAD tool, whether it be AutoCAD or Inventor. Uh, you just wanna make sure that Vault is the newest. Just because CAD tools can uh, interact with Vault if it's on the same year or uh, if the Vault is two years newer. Um, just to elaborate a little bit on that, um, if Vault is 2020, which is currently the, the version that's out, 
uh, AutoCAD and Inventor 2018, 19, and 2020 all can interact with that vault. So depending on the year of the CAD tool that you're using will dictate the version of vault that you'll have to use. But as you move forward, you want to make sure that you are checking the system requirements for each uh, version of vault that, that is currently out. Uh, the two primary uh, things you want to look at here are the, the OS that is supported for that version, uh, and then the SQL version, and then the type that you will be using. Uh, now, for those of you that are not familiar with SQL uh, per se, um, there are, just like Vault, there are free and paid versions of it. Um, SQL Express is the free version. Typically, we, if, if it is a brand new implementation, we can start off with SQL Express. Um, the time that uh, you'll have to move to a paid version is when the database gets to a 10 gigabyte size. Uh, that's when Express stops supporting it. Uh, you'll need to move to a paid version. Uh, but SQL version would be the year, just as um, uh, you have to keep in mind the CAD version that you're using. Uh, SQL, you'll have to keep in mind what year you're using currently. They are uh, 2020 supports SQL 2017, 16, and 14. Um, so as, as the Vault progresses, those, those system requirements change. So it's always a good idea, um, you know, after you implement, just to keep an eye on that in case you do need to upgrade your Vault as well. Um, those system requirements are available online for, or for Vault uh, every time a new release comes out. There is an article put up by Autodesk specifically for these system requirements to make sure that you guys are aware of them. Uh, before you you implement or upgrade your your vault, um, but once you have these these system requirements, you know if you do end up having to purchase a SQL license or you know a new machine to implement Vault on, um, you want to make sure that the machine itself is set up to host Vault on it. So that's what this initial installation comes uh, up with. Uh, for again, for those of you that aren't familiar with Vault, uh, there there are some parts that are necessary for it to to work with um, you know, with the clients and with the users. Uh, primarily, I'm talking here about IIS. Uh, that's uh, Internet Information Services. This is pretty much what Vault uses to communicate with the clients. Um, the, your, your server or your machine typically won't come with it installed automatically. It comes with the ability to have that installed. Um, and we can actually take a look here. Um, that uh, once you have it installed, you'll have access to, to this window here um, uh, in order to, to get that going. Now, the, the actual implementation of this, there are some picks and clicks that you want to go through. Uh, again, um, we only have a limited amount of time here, uh, half an hour. So going through a full-blown implementation on ABA would, would have us here for a couple hours, I think. Um, so again, we have that blog post coming out for this uh, implementation of Vault Basic. So, uh, so reference that for, for a little bit more in detail. But as far as getting that initial server set up going, you want to make sure that IIS is installed on there. You want to install SQL as well. Um, or typically, we like to do that um, just to, to make sure that we configure it the, the way that Vault needs it. Um, again, there um, is um, a specific instance of SQL that needs to be installed for Vault to recognize it. Uh, it's uh, for those of you that, that may have done this before, um, you'll, you'll know that uh, it needs to be called Autodesk Vault in order for, for Vault to recognize it here. Um, so actually, on that note, while we're you know, talking about this initial setup uh, and, and who might know or who might not know, uh, we're actually going to go ahead and send out a poll, I believe, uh, to, to figure out what, um, what our audience here has experience with as far as Vault. You know, do you have it implemented? Do you have Vault Basic? Have you never used it before? Anything like that? So I think we're gonna go ahead and send that out. And just if you guys could do me a favor, answer that, uh, and that way we know, uh, you know, what our audience uh, is ex experience here with Vault is. So I think that's gonna go out now. Okay, I think just gonna send that through the chat. We'll see. Yeah, Keep going. so yeah, as you guys get it, just please go ahead and answer that and then uh, we'll, we'll uh, keep going. And again, um, we're gonna be moving pretty pretty quick through these steps here, but if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to 
send them into the chat or send them into to Nigel here. He'll be keeping an eye uh, and we'll answer them as they come. Um, but you know, once you have your machine, once you have your, your system requirements, again, these are important because if you don't, if you don't have the right machine to host Vault, um, you're, you're starting off in an environment that won't, won't support it. So uh, when you get to this part here, step three of installing the actual ADMS or Autodesk Data Management uh, Server Console, when you get to this point and you try to install it, you'll run into issues right away if you didn't do the first two steps. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna look at the installation of Vault. And you'll see that image uh, on your screen. Uh, the thing I like to do first here is actually run those pre-checks. The reason I like to run the pre-checks beforehand is any issues that you run into, you're gonna be able to address before you actually go into the installation. Uh, again, if you've done this before, you know that when you start the installation, it goes through its whole process, it, it runs its pre-checks again. But at that point, if you run into any issues, you're gonna have to cancel the installation, go fix the issues, and then go, go back and, and start the installation again. Uh, by running the pre-checks before, uh, I'm able to address these issues um, ahead of time. And, and uh, primarily, as you can see on your screen, if I do have a reboot that's necessary, I can run that right now uh, before the installation, before canceling anything. Uh, and it pretty much doesn't, uh, it saves me a lot of time there uh, instead of having to, to do it over and over again. Um, the next thing that you see here, these are actually the, the two most common uh, action required uh, line items that I get. Uh, the top one you'll see there is reboot needed. Basically letting me know the server needs to be uh, restarted before I can install anything on it. Uh, and then the one right below that is Autodesk DM. Uh, it, it's just letting us know that in IIS, which is the thing that I showed you guys earlier, it's sensing that we have previously installed Vault. So again, this is, this is that Autodesk DM that it's talking about. Um, when it runs its pre-check, it, it, it does a check for this. Uh, because Vault has been previously installed and it's currently installed on there, it's letting me know hey, you'll, you'll need to, to remove this or there's already a version on there. Um, what do you want us to do about it? The easiest way to get rid of this is to actually come in here and remove it. Uh, and that way, when you run the pre-check, it'll, it'll go away. Uh, I'm not gonna go ahead and do that just because, uh, again, I already have Vault Basic installed on here. Um, so the, the, these pre-checks, again, are just gonna help me get through the installation itself uh, a lot quicker. Once you, you get past those, those issues there, um, you can go ahead and do the installation process itself. You know, we all read this, this license and service agreement and just go ahead and install it on the location that you need this server to go on. Um, so again, installing that ADMS, run the pre-checks, it'll tell you about the reboots. Uh, if there is a SQL instance already created, which there should be because we did it in the previous steps, it'll actually get, throw up a message saying, hey, there is an instance on here already. Uh, if you continue with the installation, you'll have to migrate uh, that database. That's perfectly fine. Um, I know a lot of times, the first time you're doing installations like this, uh, messages like that kind of get people antsy. Just make sure that you're clicking through. You, um, that's what that message is telling you. You previously installed SQL, so no worries there. Uh, and then uh, once it's installed, which we'll see here in data management, oh, I'm gonna cancel out of here. Once it's installed, you'll have the, the ADMS or data management server console uh, on your, your machine. You can go ahead and, and run it. Uh, the last point I have there is giving a name to your vault. So uh, once you have um, ADMS installed, we'll see here that, that it comes up. Um, as far as default passwords, um, every time uh, on a new installation of vault, the administrator account that is uh, in there is actually the, uh, has a blank password. So this is set up for, for pretty much all, every uh, blank implementation of vault. Uh, it's pretty much left up to the, the customer or the user to change that password to something that, that is more secure than blank. So pretty much anything at that point. Uh, you just want to make sure that only certain users or, or whoever will be managing the, the vault has access to that password. 
Um, so when you, if you have a blank vault uh, in here, you'll see that I already have one created. But the first time you, you open this up, it's a brand new implementation, uh, you won't have a vault already created. It'll give you this message here, do you wanna create a new one? Uh, you'll say yes, and then you'll wanna go ahead and give your vault a name. Again, by default, we typically use vault uh, just as, as a generic name, but depending on your customer, whether we wanna call it, you know, Kati Vault, um, you wanna go ahead and uh, make sure that you're giving it the right name that first time. Um, there is a way to change the name, um, but it requires detaching the vault and reattaching it, giving it a new name. So it's a lot easier to give it the right name the first time around. The next thing you wanna keep in mind here when creating a vault is you wanna make sure that you are telling it the right location to keep all of your files. Uh, if you're familiar with Vault, you know that a copy of each file that you upload is kept on the server or on this machine. Uh, so you wanna make sure that they are stored on the drive with the most space. Uh, if that's by default, it chooses the C drive. In most cases, that's not the largest drive. Um, so if you do have a drive specific, uh, specifically attached uh, for space, make sure that you're uh, telling it that location when you create your Vault. Um, so, you know, once you, you pick your name, you'll have um, your vault uh, already set up. That, that's uh, pretty much the, the, you have a vault right now that only has one person that has access to it. That's the administrator. Again, that, that's a limited amount of, of, of people that can access it right now. The next thing you want to do is actually add groups and roles. Now, the reason that we are not uh, implementing it fully just uh, through this ABA is because everybody's um, implementations will be different. Uh, you'll all have different groups. You'll all have different users uh, in those groups. Um, and then those groups will all have different permissions. That's one of the nice things about Vault is you're, you're able to create your groups uh, and users and then just manage what each group can do through one console here. So let's take a look. Uh, in order to add users, you're gonna go to tools inside of the, the ADMS and then go to administration. And here you'll see that there, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. You have a way to view the users that you have, view the groups, and then if you're not too sure on what each role does, you can always click through this and you'll see what, what each uh, role inside of Vault um, has permission to do inside of it. So. First thing you wanna do here is actually create your users. Um, you know, eventually we're gonna go ahead and put them into groups, but you wanna go ahead and create your users that will be going into those groups. Um, so pretty self-explanatory again, you're gonna go into, into users, create a new user. I'm gonna create myself here. And then we're gonna give it a username. Um, again, this is uh, pretty customizable to your liking. Um, so whether it be first, initial, last name, so. J better it's Clara. Um, that, that's pretty much up to you. If you wanted to match your email um, format, you can go ahead and do that as well. Um, but for now, we're gonna do first initial last name. Uh, as far as email, not, uh, email field here, uh, typically if there are notifications that go out through Vault, uh, this is primarily through, through ECO that we're talking about or any other customization that you'll have, um, all within the, the professional version of it, uh, you want to make sure that this email field is actually filled out. And then as far as password, since you'll probably be the administrator creating these users, you can leave it as blank or give them a generic password. The user will then have the option to change that down the line to, to a more familiar password that they can use. Uh, the last thing down here that you'll notice is roles, vaults, and groups. Again, we don't have any groups created yet, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, and then actually, uh, as, uh, as we go here, I mentioned that all the permissions can actually be managed through the group. So we don't actually have to edit any of this. Unless you're explicitly, uh, this is you know, a unique user that, that will have, that may be part of the engineering group, but you also want as an administrator, you know, they may be added to the engineering group, but you'll give them an additional administrator role. So, you know, um, there, there's many ways you can control this. Uh, as far as bulk, um, 
bulk permissions, we'll see that you can actually manage those through, through, the, through groups. Uh, for now, again, we'll, we'll only add one user here, but the next thing we'll do is create groups. Again, we're gonna go ahead and create a new group. We're gonna call this you know, engineering. And I mentioned uh, the engineering group will control the permissions and the roles for everyone within it. So again, you're gonna go ahead and apply a document editor too. That means they'll be able to, man to, to uh, edit files inside of Vault. You wanna give them access to the Vault that you need them to. So um, a lot of our customers like to have what's called the sandbox vault where they'll test out changes, make sure that everything works properly before they apply it to their production server. Um, if that's the case, you'll wanna have users that can, act, only certain users can access the sandbox. You wanna go ahead and do that. And then lastly, uh, you can put groups within groups. Um, so that's just an option here. It's, uh, we don't typically do it, but um, if you if you do desire to do that, you can. And then the last part here is adding group members. One of the things I touch on as far um, as the blog post that I talked about is you can't create empty groups. So if I hit okay here, it's gonna tell me, hey, add at least one person. So we're gonna go here and add the people that we need as a part of it. And that just means here, both the administrator and myself are getting these permissions associated to us uh, and, and access to those vaults. So this is uh, you know, a pretty big step. A lot of times we take some time here with our customers when we're, when we're doing implementations to discuss the workflow that the customer's using. Uh, not only discuss the workflow that they're using, but discuss whether or not that workflow is the way that they want to, to be working currently. Do we, uh, do we wanna change anything? Do we wanna add certain groups? Who will we want to be involved? All these conversations you know, help us make our customers more efficient and make their process more efficient. So, you know, this was, uh, this is just my, uh, my domain here, my, my laptop basically that I'm working off of. So it's not gonna have many people jumping on. Every once in a while I'll have a colleague jump on so I'll create a user for them. But, um, you know, it's not that big of a process on my end. On your end, I would definitely recommend you take more time and uh, work out the process that you will be working on and break down your groups, break down what each group should have as far as permissions, you know, pretty much outline all of that. Um, we use some, some tools here, such as Lucidchart, to make sure that, that we, can, we can actually keep track of all those things for our customers. So now that you have users, now they have groups, they all have permissions, um, pretty much all of your users that you created will have access to the vault uh, through the client. Puts us on our next step here, inventor IPJ uh, configuration, so step five. Again, you might be thinking we, we're an AutoCAD house, we don't use inventor. Um, well, the reason you wanna set up an inventor IPJ here uh, is because, oh, oops. Uh, the reason you wanna set up the inventor IPJ here is because the functionality inside of, of Vault uh, requires an inventor IPJ to actually uh, perform it. Uh, perform these functions. Uh, these functions that I'm talking about are rename, um, you know, moving these files. Nigel mentioned earlier about the intelligence of Vault with these CAD formats. Uh, we've all been familiar with where uh, a file is moved from its original location. You open up the um, the assembly, and it's all of a sudden telling you, "Hey, I can't find this file." Well, um, with this Inventor IPJ. Um, it's, it allows Vault to actually keep these connections whenever you move something, whenever you place it in a different location, you're able to, to keep that functionality. It's able to, to replace those, those, um, those relationships. So uh, setting up that inventor IPJ, um, it's, it's similar to the way that you will be um, using your, your normal IPJ, your normal inventor project file uh, except you will need to to switch it over to a uh, to a vault format. There, um, it 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 knows that it needs to work on a local space, but it's still connected to a location inside a vault. Uh, again, a lot more detail on creating this IPJ uh, and any of your libraries, any of your content center, all of these um, these these options that you have, um, you know. Uh, 
uh, are configurable, uh, but it is a longer process, especially if you're doing it for the first time. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and reference, reference that blog post that, that I'm talking about um, coming out pretty soon. Uh, it goes a lot more in detail on how to do that. Uh, and then step six, uh, adoption. Uh, a lot of the times we have seen our customers with the need to use Vault, uh, add this to their workflow. It, it will make things a lot easier to use. But what we end up seeing is uh, a lot of pushback typically with, um, a lot, sorry, a lot of pushback here from the users. Uh, it is a new tool. The first time you start using a new tool, it does slow things down. Uh, we're not gonna go ahead and, and jump on here and say, hey, everything's gonna be perfect the first time you implement Vault. Uh, all the users will automatically know how to use it uh, and, it's, um, and it'll, it'll make them faster instantly. That's, that's not the case. It is a new tool. You'll need to, to go ahead and um, you know, either get some training on it, watch some of our AVAs on, on how, to, how to go through that workflow. Uh, if you're a Lifeline or Streamline customer with us, we do have jump starts every month uh, on Vault, basic workflow, how to do that. You know, come in, sit in with us. Um, we'll, we'll get you jump, uh, jump started on that, uh, that process there. Um, the, the biggest thing is sticking with it, making sure that your users uh, are up, uh, adopting it, are using it uh, in their workflow. Um, once they get through that, that initial, the, the break-in period, um, it, it'll definitely, you'll see, you'll definitely see the, the, the benefits of, um, of the Vault workflow. So, uh, again, um, this is just a, a very um, overall process of how to implement the Vault in here. Um, it, it will be different for, for all of you that are on the stream, whether you, you've been using it before or if you're, you're looking to implement it for the first time. But um, again, stick with it. Any questions that you have, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we'll, we'll be more than happy to answer that there. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and open it up to any questions here. Nigel, do you see anything there? Yeah, let's go ahead and get some of these squared away. Um, Everything you did today, Jose, just, I guess answer a couple of questions here, um, is implementation for both like if it were on your computer or a server, correct? Nothing different. Yeah, so um, that, so yeah, thanks, thanks for bringing that up. But for Vault Basic specifically, um, one of the, if we look at the system requirements there, one of the, the system requirements is, um, or Windows operating systems that it's supported on is Windows 10. So for Vault Basic, you're good to implement it like I am on, on my regular laptop. Uh, if you're implementing Vault Workgroup or Vault Professional, that changes a little bit. Um, you'll need a dedicated server to, to get that going. Absolutely. And, and if you are using Vault Pro on a Windows 10 machine, um, you're prone to, to run into some issues. That some. Like right now, my Vault doesn't work um, because I had a <laughs> Windows update that broke it. So if you are um, using Windows, if you are using Vault Pro, we urge you, urge you, urge you to take a look at the system requirements and make sure you meet them. Because um, if you don't, you can run into some issues. Um, it was mentioned that SQL Express 10 gigs limit. Um, can you clarify that that is, I, I know the answer to this, Jose. Yep. Can so, you clarify what that means? Yeah, sure thing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the ADMS again. Um, and as you add information to Vault, as you add files, as you add properties, pretty much all of the, the nice things that Vault comes with, it keeps one central database in SQL for that Vault. So we're gonna look at the ADMS here. And then we're gonna look at the Vault that I have created. The number that you wanna keep an eye on is this database size. Right now it's empty, it's, it's brand new. I created this maybe two days ago and it's still 322 megabytes. Again, that's pretty tiny. Uh, as this number gets close to 10 gigabytes, um, we typically uh, advise our customers to, to look into buying yep. a license of SQL. Absolutely, um, but the file store size is gonna be considerably larger than the database size. Um, and that's the zero bytes. As you can see, I have no files in here. Um, this can get up to, I've seen it up to like 1.5 terabytes. Without hitting the 10 gigabytes without hitting the, limit. Exactly, without hitting this, 10 gigabyte database limit. Uh, so you wanna go ahead and keep an eye on this number. 
um, once that again reaches 10, it'll actually lock out the vault. We've seen it where a uh, customer comes in. They just can't process it. Exactly. They're like, hey, we can't check out, check in, we can't do anything. We look at this and database is over 10 gigabytes. Uh, it's not, yeah. it can't write anymore. So it can't make any more changes. Yeah, it's not, it's not an exact number of 10. I've, I've seen it. Over, under. I've seen it under and lock and I've seen it over and lock. So 10 is the approximation of when it will happen. So if you get upwards of six, seven, I would start considering considering a full version of SQL. Um, additionally, uh, people are gonna ask this question, can I just delete stuff from my vault and the database size gets smaller? Um, you could, but it's not gonna be an appreciable difference. Yeah, it's not as significant as people usually uh, think it is. Yep. Um, it, in a panic mode where, you know, again, I mentioned a customer comes in and they can't do anything. Uh, yeah, let's let's delete some files. Let's let's purge some versions. Stuff. So you like can that. work until you get that version of SQL. Exactly, but you know it's not a scalable solution. Absolutely, absolutely. Touching on that database size, uh, one thing, one other thing that will lock out um, your users is if we come in here, you'll see that right now I have 562 gigabytes of space. Um, one of the system requirements that you'll see inside of those articles is the size of the drive that you should get. Um, so 562, if that gets full on the server and that's where the files are hosted, uh, it'll lock you out. You guys won't be able to add anything. It, it'll, it'll act a little wonky. Uh, we've seen it happen before where, um, you know, the drive looked like it wasn't full, but it was some form of virtual drive. And when we actually checked the space on it, it was full. <laughs> so again, um, when, when you're creating your machines, when you're creating these servers, keep an eye on these numbers. Um, and if you're a streamlined customer already, Jose looks at these numbers for you. Um, so yeah. you got to worry a bit less about that. Unless you're growing like insanely fast, which some of our customers have been doing. Yeah, the biggest thing is I, if I come in, if I, uh, and if I work with one of our customers here and I get into the server and I see red, that means it's less than 10% left on a drive definitely something I let them know right away. Like, hey, you guys are growing. Um, you don't want to go ahead and, yeah. and hit this number, trust me. Yeah, spend spend $150 for a drive as opposed to having your engineering team down for a day and a half. Yeah, I was, I was uh, <laughs> yeah. Which We're, we've seen. Exactly, we, we've uh, talked to customers about that. Well, yep. Yeah, it looks like Frank asked a question here too. Is Vault Pro required to install on a server or can Vault Basic be used? So you can use Vault Basic or Vault Pro or Vault Workgroup on a independent server machine. They're all, um, they all are supported on certain server OSs, depending on the version that you're on. We have tons of customers who use Vault Basic on their server. Um, so yeah, either or. And then Chelsea just asked the question, how much RAM space should the individual computers have to be able to contain to the vault? So if you're looking at the server, um, 16 is more than sufficient mm -hmm. um, on the server end. And then um, on the user end, it's whatever. Yeah, so the, <laughs> the, the biggest thing there, uh, Chelsea, is uh, if you're running Inventor or you're running, uh, you know, 3ds Max, anything that's graphic intensive, you probably have more than enough RAM to run Vault. Yeah. Um, but on the server side, if for the because Vault is two components, right? It's the the clients and the server. On the server, six. I, I, I haven't believe had the, a problem with more than sixteen. Yeah, the the recommended amount uh, again through the the system requirements for each year. Typically, the, 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 the RAM has stayed pretty consistent. But I think it's eight minimum, 16 recommended. Exactly, yeah. You'll, you'll see two numbers on there. One will be, hey, if you absolutely only have this amount, it'll run, but we recommend this amount. So yeah. 16, I think, is the recommended. Yeah, and if you're on SQL Express, it's less of a problem as well because single SQL Express allows you to not use as much. Yep. Um, so. Yeah, Brian's like, start with 64. You might as well start with 128, Brian. <laughs> awesome. Um, so yeah, hopefully that answers your question there, Chelsea. Um, <laughs> let's see what else we got. Brian really wants that toaster. Yes, sir. Uh, let's see. Any other questions? Um, how does Vault and the .ipj file interact with one another? Does one IPJ control the Vault or can multiple IPJs reside in one Vault? That's a great question. Yeah, so uh, recommended workflow is one IPJ yep. inside of a Vault. Uh, essentially what happens, if you, you're familiar with Inventor, you know that you place the IPJ at the highest point of your workspace and then it can see everything below it. 
Uh, again, that's, that's uh, the, the normal inventor workflow. Uh, same, same thing for Vault. You're going to place it at the top level of your, your folder structure inside of Vault. And then from there, it will be able to see all of your folders beno uh, below. So uh, it, it'll link your workspace or your working folder to the Vault structure. Yep. And then um, within Inventor itself, if you have Content Center in Vault, you control that in the application options of Inventor. Um, so when you go to the application options of Inventor and you look at Content Center, there's two options. One is local desktop content, which is either on your computer or on a server or whatever. And then um, Vault it is in Vault. Exactly. Um, and what he means by that is if you have, so we all know about the standard Content Center libraries, you know, the ANSI, the sheet metal, everything that you have. Um, there's two options for that. You can have them locally on your C drive, access them that way, or you can actually host them on Vault. You'll see there's a libraries folder here. You can uh, you can host all of your, your um, standard content center. That one's not that big of a deal. The big of the uh, the big deal one that I think is custom content center. So if you are constantly uh, you have your own library, you have your own your own formats there. Um, you can host it inside of Vault make sure that everyone is has access to that library that way when it's edited it automatically is available to everyone that, that has been using it um the, as opposed to having it locally editing it locally and then having to make sure that everybody else has access to it um so um pretty 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 good workflow there let's see some other questions coming through Let's double check. Um, yeah, it looks like we should be okay on questions. Uh, any sample? So I did see uh, one about some sample files ah. package to be used as a test. Um, now, when you meet, sorry, um, Maricia, I believe that's, uh, sorry if I butchered your name there. But uh, as far as sample files, uh, do you mean inventor sample files or uh, you know, just uh, vault in general. Because again, if you have the product design um, and manufacturing collection, you have access to vault basic already. So if it's something that you're looking to test out, again, if you're using a Windows 10 machine, you can more than uh, easily test this out in your own local environment, start uh, using it, you know, get practice with it. You should be able to implement that on your own. Um, you, it usually comes with your inventor download um, you should have access to that to that download there. Uh, as far as inventor sample files, uh, what we typically use here are the the uh, Autodesk packages that they they have. Um, there are some sample assemblies that you can download and actually load into Vault uh, that way. So I mean, I guess the answer is yes. There's there's both ways. Uh, if you don't have a product design um, and manufacturing collection. Um, I don't believe you'll have access to Vault Basic, but um, you know, if, if you want to go ahead and reach out to us uh, and talk a little bit more about your specific situation, we, we can do that as well. All right, let's give it a couple more minutes here for some more questions to come in or follow-up questions, anything. Again, um, overall, this, this implementation um, portion will be different to all of you. Um, and again, if, if you are looking to implement this for the first time, uh, it could be a lot of times our customers use it as a way to change the workflow that they're, they're usually, they're, they're currently using for a workflow that, that would work best for, for their environment. I think that's, uh, yeah, I think, I think uh, that's everything. Cool. Um, again, thanks again for everybody for joining us today. Before we let you guys go, um, I just want to go over some of the events that we have. So, Jose, can you open a Chrome window for me and go to katu.com forward slash events? Yes, sir. Yes, I can. And then while he's doing this, you can take any last minute questions as well. A question from YouTube. Um, is Vault Basic different than Pro? Absolutely it is. Um, there are some things in Pro that add um, 
to the functionality of Vault Basic. Vault Basic has pretty much everything you would need from a standard check-in and check-out file reservation functionality. Vault Pro gets into things like life cycles, revisions, ECOs, all that stuff. So yeah, there's there's some some AVAs that we've done on on Vault Professional functionality. Yep. So um, they should be um, available through the AVA channel there. Yep. All right. So upcoming events, we have a couple of webinars and live events coming up here. Uh, so on March 24th, that's in about two weeks, we have a, another webinar um, in the series for uh, plastics, um, plastic design and manufacturing. So go ahead and take a look at that. That's on our continue.com forward slash events page, um, as well as an event that we're doing in Salt Lake, which is very similar. I think it's the exact same event that we did over in Portland last week. I know some people on this call actually went to that event in Portland. Uh, so that is a automation event where Nathan, I think Nathan will be going out there um, showing off what's going on um, from the design and drawing and process automation standpoint. So definitely if you are in Salt Lake City area, that might be something you want to take a look at. Um, cool. And then last question, I'll take this before we let everybody go. Can you explain the difference between doc editor one and two? Yeah, so uh, the main difference there is deleting. Um, so it, it's more important here in Vault Basic just because roles have a lot more uh, power. As opposed to because they're controlled by life cycles. Exactly. So, so in Pro and Workgroup, you, you can have additional permissions for these files. But in, a, uh, in Vault Basic, the difference between level one and level two is level one can't delete files. It, it's just not part of that role. So if you want a user to, be, to have the ability to do that, you make sure that you give them level two. Yep. Um, and then is there an autoloader option inside of basic? Yes. Yes, there is. Uh, autoloader, for those of you that, that aren't familiar with it, is a way to mass upload files into the vault. Uh, again, if you're in a new environment, you, it'll be an empty vault like the one that I showed you guys. You want to load it. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you load um, the files that you need in there. Yep, absolutely. And then, um, and then uh, Brett, for what meeting invite did you want us to add you to? As far as... Oh, that's like Bobby. Sorry, Bobby. Yeah. From Brett. <laughs> yeah, I guess he logged into Brett's. Uh, um, maybe he means the, the AVA invitation list, maybe? Uh, possibly. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that. If you need something else, Bobby, um, let us know. Yep. Cool. Again, thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Jose, thanks for um, hopping on today for all of this. And um, we'll go ahead and uh, see you all next week. So thanks again, everybody. Bye-bye.